Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're just letting people join and we will start right at the top of the hour. Okay, we'll give it about 10 more seconds. Thank you all so much for joining us on this Thursday afternoon before a holiday week. We appreciate you being here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Um, so welcome everybody. We are um, going to be talking about Safe Routes to School Engagement, Education and Encouragement Programming today. Um, this is the second webinar in a series of webinars that we're hosting for um, Houston, Safe, Houston Safe Routes to School put on by Houston Health Department. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us. Um, if you came to our last session, thanks for coming back. And if you're new, welcome to our webinar series. My name is Corey Johnson. Um, I'll be one of the presenters today. I'm from Safe Routes Partnership. Um, we are partnering with Houston Health Department to put on these webinars. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, so for those of you um, who might be new to Safe Routes um, Partnership, our mission is to advance safe walking and rolling to and from schools and in everyday life, improving the health and well-being of people of all races, income levels and abilities, and building healthy, thriving communities for everyone. And we are a national organization, um, so we are all over the country. I don't think we have any people in Texas, but we're getting to know Texas pretty well. So um, definitely excited to be working with you all uh, in the Houston area. Just a little um, Zoom refresher in case anybody needs it. Um, all the audience members will be on, um, on mute and uh, no video today, but the chat should be open. So please feel free to um, contribute to the chat, um, ask questions in the chat. We also have the Q&A box and I have a few um, times where I'll be asking you to respond to, um, to different questions in the chat. So feel free to use that as you would, as you would like. The session is also being recorded today. Um, we'll have it available on our website shortly after um, session ends. And we'll also send out a link to um, the recording and all the presentation slides today. So keep an eye out for that as well. And um, as I mentioned, my name is Corey Johnson. I'm the presenter today. Um, also joining me, we have Anise Siegel, um, who's from Link Houston, and Amara Mojite from Harris County Precinct 1. They'll be sharing about some um, interesting traffic garden or traffic playground projects that have taken place and will take place um, in the Houston area. So um, I look forward to hearing your presentations as well. And if you all would like to introduce yourselves in the chat box, just say your name and your organization or connection to Safe Routes to School, that would be great. Just let me know um, who's on the call today. So feel, feel free to pop that in the chat. Um, and we will go ahead and get started. I also will apologize ahead of time if there's any background noise. Um, they're doing road work on my street, so it's been like this for a few months now, so I apologize if you hear any little buzzing uh, noises in the background. Um, thanks for putting up with that. Um, all right, so as people are introducing themselves um, in the chat box, I will go ahead and go over our agenda for today. So um, we're gonna start out by really framing this conversation around Safe Routes to School um, and Vision Zero, since um, you know you all are, uh, have just started a Vision Zero initiative in Houston, um, and there are a lot of examples of ways to connect Safe Routes to School to Vision Zero. Um, in our last webinar, we talked a bit about kind of like the vision for what Houston vision, uh, for what Houston Safe Routes to School can look like, and part of that vision is connecting Safe Routes to School um, to the Vision Zero initiative. So we'll um, start by talking about that, and then go into talking about um, engagement programming, encouragement programming, education programming, and then feature these um, Houston area highlights of traffic, traffic playgrounds, and then end with a Q and A, and then some next steps. Um, so again, feel free to add questions in the chat. 
throughout um, throughout our discussion today. Um, yeah, and if there's anything y'all would like to share or contribute, please let me know. Um, Natasha is also another colleague of mine who's on our call today. Um, she will be managing the chat box and we'll also be adding in some links to things that we talk about today. So feel free to, um, to chat with Natasha as well. So to get started, um, I wanted to know how familiar um, you all on the call are with um, Houston's Vision Zero um, initiative. So I believe the action plan was published last November. So it's been about a year um, since that's actually been up, but I know that it's been a longer journey um, than, than just one year. So I'm curious um, if any of you all were involved in that process or how familiar you are uh, with Vision Zero. So I'll give this about another 10, 20 seconds before we move on. So right now it's looking pretty mixed. You have some people very familiar, a bunch of people who are somewhat familiar, and then some people who um, are learning about Vision Zero for the first time, which is awesome. Okay, 10 more seconds if you wanna add in your comments, and then I'll show our results and we will keep things moving. Okay. So like I mentioned, um, it's pretty, pretty split. We have some people who are pretty, uh, very familiar, a few who are somewhat familiar, and then people who are gonna be learning about Vision Zero, um, maybe for the first time. So we have a nice, nice mix today. Uh, okay, so I wanna do a quick, just general overview of Vision Zero um, really quickly. Um, Vision, Zero, Vision Zero is an international road safety movement to eliminate all traffic fatalities and serious injuries. And it was started in Sweden in 1997. Um, so this is uh, you know, an international movement. Um, we do have a bunch of cities in the United States that are Vision Zero cities, um, including Anchorage, Alaska, Denver, LA, New York. Um, I'm in Washington, DC, we're a Vision Zero city. And I'll talk a bit today about um, how our program, how our Safe Routes to School program here in DC is also connected to Vision Zero. Um, again, since that's something you are thinking about doing in Houston for your program. Um, so in Houston, um, in August of 2019, um, Mayor Turner signed a Vision Zero executive order committing to end, tra committing to end traffic deaths and serious injuries in Houston on Houston streets by, um, by 2030. Um, so usually Vision Zero cities have some sort of, you know, like target goal um, or year to end all traffic deaths and to end all traffic deaths and serious injuries. Um, I think here in DC, ours is 2024, so yours is 2030. And so um, in November of, uh, of 2020, Houston published your uh, Vision Zero Action Plan. So, you know, after that prelim preliminary announcement in 2019, um, you know, the city has gone on to develop this action plan, which is currently in the implementation phase. I'm sure that some of you might've been involved um, in some of the Vision Zero Action Planning that was put out, um, you know, as, and also involved in the community engagement process. Um, and the action plan outlines a comprehensive strategy for making streets safer for people who are walking and biking. Um, I don't see any mentions of safe routes to school in the action plan, but if there's somebody who's on the call who knows more or wants to share a bit more about the action plan, um, please feel free to put this in the chat. Um, it's really exciting development. I looked at the plan and I loved it. I've looked at, at Vision Zero plans from lots of different cities. Um, and this is a really, really great one. It's very comprehensive. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it's, uh, how it's put into action. So just a few highlights from the Vision Zero plan. And again, I'm going over this pretty quickly because I think that there are some people who might be familiar with this, but just a quick recap. Um, so Houston has developed a four-pronged approach to Vision Zero. Um, and this includes communication strategies, um, safe speeds, safe systems, and programming. Um, and a lot of what we're gonna talk about today, um, you know, can fit into these different priority groups, um, especially the ones around communication um, and community engagement. The action plan also includes a section on community engagement, which can be applicable to safe routes to school. Um, so as I mentioned, this is a really nice um, comprehensive um, way to, um, yeah, approach Vision Zero. 
Oh, and somebody found a mention of uh, Safe Routes to School in the action plan. So that's in the chat box, which is awesome. Thank you, David, for putting that in there. So today we're going to be talking a bit about how Safe Routes to School can play a role in Vision Zero. Um, so Safe Routes, to, so Vision Zero can support Safe Routes to School initiatives to improve street safety and encourage more kids and families to walk and bike to and from school. Um, and this was something that was highlighted in the choices brief that the Houston Health Department put together when thinking about um, how to like shape and model um, the Houston Safe Routes to School program. This is something that's already um, top of mind, which is great. Um, so here at Safe Routes Partnership, we've been thinking a lot about integrating Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero. Um, and in 2017, we put together a report specifically about how to integrate the two. Um, and Natasha, if you want to put the report in the chat, that would be great. Um, and you know, the thing is, since Vision Zero and Safe Routes to School share so many, you know, similar similar goals, it makes sense to try to, um, you know, join forces and and join efforts and figure out how both initiatives can support each other. You know, Safe Routes to School really focuses on making it safer for kids to walk and bike to school, and Vision Zero works to eliminate traffic deaths and serious injuries. Um, so there's there's already that natural link um, between the two different, um, you know, different programs. Um, so as I mentioned, we put together a report in 2017 that outlines the different benefits of um, combining Vision Zero and Safe Routes to School. We present strategies for what this can look like, um, provide tips on how to advocate for Vision Zero. We also think about ways to address um, equity in Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero. And we highlight a few communities that have um, been working on this. So Portland, Oregon, LA, San Francisco, um, Santa Ana and DC. Um, and we actually just chose these cities because um, we have staff members who either are in these cities or who have worked here or who have worked in these cities, but there are a bunch of other examples about what this integration um, can look like. Um, I'll also note that since we published this um, report a few years ago, we've removed enforcement from our programming model. So, um, you know, if this was a 2021 version, we probably wouldn't have mentions of um, enforcement in this report, but um, it is a report from a few years ago. So I just wanted to um, make sure that that was clear. And so there, it's a long report, um, so I'm not going to go into the whole the whole thing now, but I did want to kind of give a few highlights about what advancing Safe Routes to School through Vision Zero can look like. So these are a few strategies that we that we really think about, um, you know, just really prioritizing children as vulnerable, vulnerable road users um, and schools as key destinations to where people, not even students, but lots of people, lots of people go to schools for, you know, um, for meetings or sports games or practices, um, worship services. So a school is a key destination and people need a safe, you know, safe way to get there. Um, increasing investments in safe routes to school, um, having a dedicated, dedicated safe routes to school coordinator, which is something that was talked about in our, in our last session. That's another way to integrate the two. Um, reducing speeding and speed limits around schools. A lot of cities, cities have school zones, um, school speed zones now. So that's one way to integrate the two. Engaging different community groups um, in Vision Zero and safe routes to school. Um, offering comprehensive bicycle and pedestrian safety education to children, and we'll talk about that a lot a bit later on. And then also, um, you know, pursuing unique um, approaches that will advance safety for kids and families in, in your community. So again, this is just a really basic brief overview about what this um, integration can look like, and I'll go into it a bit more as we walk through um, our, you know, our presentation today. But I did want to start out by you know, just kind of giving this framework and saying that um, integrating Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero can be done, and with Vision Zero being such a high profile initiative too, um, linking it to Safe Routes to School is nice um, to help, you know, kind of build that awareness and say, you know, Safe Routes to School is important um, and, you know, and, and can be given the same um, type of attention that something like uh, like Vision Zero is given. So I'm going to stop there and see if there are any questions or comments in the chat before we move on to talking a bit more about um, our programming. So I think we'll continue on. Um, and Natasha, thanks for adding those links. And as I mentioned, if any questions come up, 
um, or comments, please feel free to add them into uh, the chat box. So in our last session, we talked a bit about the six E's of Safe Routes to School, um, engagement, equity, encouragement, engineering, education, and evaluation. And uh, today's session, we're really gonna hone in on three of the six E's, um, which are engagement, encouragement, and education. Um, we do recommend having a comprehensive approach to safe routes to school, so incorporating all of the E's. Um, they're all extremely important, but for today's session, we're going to be focusing on three, so it's not that the others aren't important, it's just that today we're focusing on three, so please keep that in mind. Um, so in the chat, I'd like for you to take a moment to think about um, a positive community engagement experience you may have been involved in, either something that you led or something you participated in, and just share what you enjoyed about that experience. Um, so I know that for me, um, I like arts-based things. So anything that involves like art or creativity, um, I like community engagement experiences that involve, you know, that type of engagement as opposed to doing like a formal meeting um, or a survey. So I'm curious if you all have any um, anything that you particularly like or enjoy about community engagement. Um, you know, do you like surveys? Do you like meetings? Do you like outreach tabling? Um, so if you have any ideas about what you prefer for community engagement, go ahead and that add that into the uh, into the chat box, and we'll keep an eye on that as we move to talk a bit about community engagement. So um, community engagement is, um, you know, almost the, the heart of what we do at Safe Routes to School. Um, and strong community engagement is the key to kicking off your program. So some of you might've been involved in community engagement activities related to Vision Zero. Um, some of you might already be engaging communities, um, you know, around safe school travel, maybe doing bike rodeos or talking to families or talking to school administrators about how to make sure that, you know, kids are getting to and from school safely. Um, so you're already off to a great start if you're if you're doing that. Um, and you know, Safe Routes to School initiatives should really begin by listening to students, families, teachers, and and school leaders um, because that'll ensure that your program is actually doing what the community wants and needs for it to do. So community engagement matters because it builds community, uplifts underrepresented voices, it prioritizes needs, increases program participation, and also increases accountability. Um, and you know, for me, community engagement is really all about, um, you know, building those connections um, and building those relationships. Um, I think that a lot of Safe Routes to School is about building relationships with each other and supporting each other. Um, and community engagement is really, you know, how we do that. So what does community engagement in Safe Routes to School look like? Um, it looks like it does in a lot of other um, programs, things like surveys, having committees, task forces, public meetings, going on walk audits, neighborhood walks, um, talking to students and families and neighbors about safety, what makes our street safe to walk on, what makes it unsafe, creating safety maps, um, doing outreach tabling, um, storytelling campaigns, those of you who might have done, uh, worked on a bit of the Vision Zero action planning, um, you, there was a great um, storytelling campaign done for Vision Zero, where people shared their experiences about, you know, um, traffic safety, lack of traffic safety, um, and Natasha can put in the chat um, a link to the Humans of Houston storytelling campaign that was a part of, um, of Houston Vision Zero. I really enjoyed reading through all the different stories that were um, that were shared there. And something similar can be done in Safe Routes to School, um, just having people share different stories about um, you know, traveling to school, um, what makes traveling to school safe, what makes it unsafe. So that's another idea to pull from, uh, from Houston Vision Zero. And just thinking about a few opportunities to, um, you know, integrate Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero from an engagement angle. Um, you know, you might want to adopt some of the best practices from the Vision Zero action planning experience. Um, so what worked well, what didn't work well? Um, you know, did surveys work? Did the storytelling campaigns work? Did focus groups work? Can you do some of the same things for Safe Routes to School? Um, maybe engaging some of the same stakeholders, um, so different community groups, elected officials, um, you know, local agency staff, how can they be pulled into Safe Routes to School? 
also using the high profile of Vision Zero to build support for Safe Routes to School. So if Vision Zero is a big deal, then Safe Routes to School can be a big deal too. Um, you know, and also thinking about creating joint community experiences as a part of Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero. So if Safe Routes to School is, if Vision Zero is having an event or a safety campaign, can Safe Routes to School, you know, be a part of that as well? Um, and also, you know, just going to where people are. Um, I know that during the, you know, pandemic was a bit hard to get out and about, but it seems like we're getting out and about a little bit more now, so that's exciting. Um, going to farmers markets, community events, back to school nights, local businesses, libraries, rec centers, schools, and just talking to people about their experiences and what they need um, can be a great way to get community engagement and buy in for safe routes to school. Um, these are a few different activities that I've done in DC around Safe Routes to School um, and Vision Zero. So having parent and caregiver meetings, um, the top right-hand corner is a community art making project that I did where we did a we designed a temporary um, artistic crosswalk. So we invited people to come and paint it and talked a bit about um, you know, how to travel to school safely and what, what people needed. Um, just going on a walk around a neighborhood, it might sound really simple, but that's like one of the best ways to learn about what people need or want, um, or just to get that on the ground experience of, um, you know, walking or, or rolling or riding around a street. Um, if you do this, you know, around a few different, you know, schools you might be working with and just invite a few community members, it's a really valuable um, way to, you know, build partnerships and um, learn about what it's actually like to be, you know, in that community as somebody who's walking or rolling. Um, and then there's outreach tabling. So just going to different community events and having a table talking about, you know, safe routes to school, traveling to school safely, figuring out what people need. Um, here's an example of the crosswalk that we worked on in DC. Um, and here's the crosswalk laid out for a safety demonstration. Um, and then here's a little community quilt that we did where we solicited feedback from people about what they needed to travel to school safely. So it wasn't like a survey, but they made a little artistic representation instead, and then, um, you know, designed it into a community quilt. So these are just a few, um, you know, engagement ideas that I've done um, in, in DC. There's also a photo booth, um, that's another great option. So these are just different things to kind of, you know, get you started thinking about, um, you know, like what, what, what this can look like. Um, I'll also say that here in DC, our Vision Zero program is really tied towards infrastructure as is our Safe Routes to School program. So um, our Department of Transportation, DDOT, um, they actually provide grants to have different community groups and organizations do a lot of this engagement and encouragement and education programming. So all of this was done with grant money that was provided um, through our Vision Zero program. If you're thinking about ways to, you know, fund, fund different projects, um, you know, if there are Vision Zero funds that are available for some of this programming, um, that could be one, one way to make this happen. And then of course there's, you know, our virtual engagement. So our, you know, phone calls, webinars, online activities, challenges, social media, um, you know, signs, flyers, postcards. I think that virtual engagement and distance engagement is probably here to stay as well. So keeping those ideas in mind too for Safe Routes to School is a good idea. And lastly, just thinking about who should be engaged, um, students, parents, caregivers, schools and school districts, local organizations, um, government agency staff, bike pet advocates, crossing guards, bus drivers. Um, we have a, we, I guess last year, I think it was, yeah, last year we did a community engagement uh, webinar all about safe routes to school um, and talked about different people who can engage. And I'm gonna have Natasha put the link in the chat, but it's definitely worth taking a look at that recording um, and just learning about different stakeholders to bring into the process. You know, even somebody like a postal worker, um, you know, who might be used to like, you know, walking up and down a street delivering mail, um, could be somebody who might not think about engaging in safe routes to school, but who knows a lot about how, you know, a, a street around a school can work. Um, so keep an eye out for, uh, for that as well in the chat box. Um, so thinking about Safe Routes to School in Houston, um, if you have any ideas about people or organizations that should be engaged, um, formal organizations, informal community groups, feel free to put that in the chat as well. Um, I know that a lot of you on this call, I assume are the people who, you know, want to be engaged and should be engaged. If there's anybody else you think should be a part of this process, um, you know, definitely uh, include that in the chat box as well. And it seems like we already have some people who enjoy doing bike rodeos, uh, health and safety fairs, 
uh, storytelling. So a lot of you are already doing this work, which is, uh, which is awesome. So keep it up and add any other ideas to our chat box. So moving on to um, encouragement. Encouragement is just about getting people excited about your program, um, you know, and, and motivating people. That's what it's all about. Um, and engage, encouragement really builds momentum. Um, it's motivating and inspiring. It's about celebrating the successes, no matter how big or small. It can increase program participation and encouragement activities are just really fun. So, you know, things like walk or bike to school day, walking school bus programs, um, remote drop off and pick off pick up programs, incentive competitions, um, giveaways, walking, biking groups, and safety campaigns, all of those things can be a part of encouragement programming. Um, and thinking about collaborating with Vision Zero, again, if there are any sort of like citywide walking or biking campaigns, any messaging from elected officials that promote walking and biking, um, even inviting Vision Zero staff to come to encouragement events. You know, can you invite from the mayor to walk to school day or, um, you know, other staff who are working Vision Zero to, you know, do a walk audit um, or to take a walk around the neighborhood. Um, that's a great way to kind of help build those relationships. Um, and again, integrate Safe Routes to School into Vision Zero. Um, so as I mentioned, walk, and bike to school day are probably, you know, the biggest encouragement activities. I shared this during our last webinar. This is from walk to school day um, last month. We actually had a lot of um, people from the county's Vision Zero um, staff um, supporting walk to school day. So again, inviting people out, bringing people in to participate is a great way to, um, you know, link Vision Zero and Safe Routes to School and do some encouragement programming. Um, and this is actually from Montgomery County, Maryland, right outside of, um, DC, which is also a Vision Zero community, they hosted a virtual safety week as a part of their Safe Routes to School program that included like different uh, challenges throughout the week um, and encouraged people to do some, you know, fun and uh, and and safe safety uh, safety programming. Um, this was during the pandemic, so when school was, uh, you know, when in person learning was uh, was closed, they launched a virtual safety week, and this was again in partnership with. Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero. Even at the bottom of the little flyer, you can see the Vision Zero logo. So it's a nice way to, you know, kind of co-brand and, and co-lead something. Um, and then again, I also mentioned, you know, things like remote drop-off and pickup areas. So, um, you know, if there's a lot of congestion around the, you know, car loop, um, you can have designated drop-off locations a short distance away from the school. Um, and the group might walk their meaning distance. This reduces a lot of traffic congestion and also makes safe routes to school more accessible to, um, to more students. You know, incentive programs, competitions are always fun. So punch cards, mileage clubs, class competitions, uh, walker, biker programs um, can be another way to encourage people to, you know, walk or bike a bit more. You know, everybody loves a giveaway, I think, unless you have too much stuff. So giving away, you know, whether, whether it's a bike, bike helmet, bike bells, lights and reflectors, activity books, um, slow down signs, uh, you know, some of your outreach tabling, just have a little table with giveaways, talk with people about, um, you know, safety and safe routes to school. And that's a great way to, you know, keep up that encouragement and keep up that momentum. And again, this is from a walk to school day event. Um, this is one of their giveaway tables. Um, so again, in the chat box, if you have any ideas about encouragement programming that you've done, anything you'd like to see more of, um, please go ahead and add that to the chat box and I'll take a look and see. Uh, yeah, somebody mentioned Safe Kids, um, State, your local Safe Kids Coalition. Definitely, they're great partners. I worked work all the time with our Safe Kids Coalition here in DC. Um, they also have a lot of different you know, education and, and encouragement resources. So definitely um, you can look to bring them into the fold as well. Um, so again, feel free to add your ideas to the chat. If there's you know, programming you'd like to see in Houston, feel free to you know, include that. And I will stop and see if there are any questions before moving on to um, So education is another really important piece of Safe Routes to School, um, both from a safety standpoint and also as a way to increase participation in your program. 
So, you know, if somebody doesn't know how to ride a bike or cross the street safely, then they'll pro they're probably less likely to choose walking or biking, um, you know, as, as a transportation option. Um, there are also a lot of people who really don't know the benefits of walking and biking to school, um, you know, both the physical benefits and also thinking about, you know, mental health and, and wellness, um, especially during this time when people are dealing with so many different things, um, being able to take, you know, walk to school, um, you know, also has those, those mental health benefits that I think a lot of people um, are seeking right now. So Safe Routes to School is an opportunity to kind of get this information out there and have these really important conversations. Um, so education, again, it matters because it builds skills, knowledge, and how to travel safely. Um, it sets, you know, standards and expectations. It gets everybody on the same page around, you know, how to walk, how to bike, um, about, you know, driving, via yeah, driving standards that keep people safe or try to keep people safe. Um, also, transportation is always evolving. So we need to keep up with the times. Um, when I was going to school, we didn't really have scooters like we have scooters now. Um, so you have know, to learn how to, you know, travel with and on and around scooters. Um, so, you know, the, the educational piece is always evolving and we're, you know, lifelong learners here. Um, and, you know, education also just increases your comfort and confidence in walking and rolling. So um, that's the big piece of why we do education programming. Um, you know, and who needs this? Really everybody, um, students, families, school staff, even neighbors, um, people, you know, people driving, uh, the entire community um, can, can benefit from safe routes to school and, and is impacted by traffic safety. So, you know, education campaigns um, can, can be spread far and, and wide. Um, and they can look like anything from, you know, lessons in PE class to traffic playgrounds, which we'll talk about, bike helmet demonstrations, safety videos, safety campaigns. Um, a lot of this education pieces that might be coming out from Vision Zero can also be a part of Safe Routes to School. So there are lots of options for what this can, what this can look like. And thinking about that collaboration with Vision Zero, um, again, having co-branded education materials, joint safety campaigns, um, bike rodeos and skills courses for all ages, um, including bike ped safety and driver's education, co-developing bike and pedestrian and curriculum materials, and incorporating elements of road design in the safe routes to school um, can be another way to, you know, again, combine efforts and, and combine resources and show that safe routes to school and Vision Zero really work in partnership with each other. Um, as opposed to competing with one another. I'm going to take a quick look at the chat. Um, yes, yeah, Safe Kids Coalitions can also provide helmets. Absolutely. Um, Texas Medical Association can provide helmets. Yeah, you know, a lot of, um, you know, I think the great thing about partnership is that everybody kind of brings their own resources to the table. So looking at, you know, Who's in, who's in your neck of the woods, um, you know, who has links to free helmets, who has, you know, even free bikes sometimes, who has giveaway items. Um, that's really where, you know, like your, your community partners um, really play a big, a big role in this. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for, um, for those partnership opportunities. And I'm going to go ahead and stop my share and pass things over to Ines at, um, linked Houston to talk a bit about her traffic uh, traffic playground project. I was going to call it traffic garden because we call them traffic gardens here in DC, but I think you all call them traffic playgrounds. So I have to make sure that I get my lingo correct. Um, Thank you so much, Corey. Um, should I, uh, could you enable me to share my screen or? Sure. You Thank you. We should be able to share now. Okay, can everyone see this? Yes. Okay, great. Whoops. All righty. Uh, so thank you so much for hosting this important discussion um, and for uh, inviting me to share a little bit about Link Houston and about our traffic playground uh, initiative that we hosted in uh, 2018. 
So Lane Houston's mission is to advocate for a robust and equitable transportation network so that all people can reach opportunity. Transportation, how we get to where we need to go, should not be a barrier for people to reach jobs, education, housing, healthy food, or anything else we need in our lives. The way we do our work in Link Houston, we analyze data and work with communities on advocacy initiatives to shape transportation policies and investments. Our work particularly focuses on advocating for improvements to affordable transportation options like public like transit, walking, rolling, and biking. Our organization formed in 2017, and from the get-go, improving safety and accessibility for people who walk, use a wheelchair or bike was a top priority. And so from our engagement in Southwest Houston, we knew that residents wanted to engage more and advocate for transportation solutions in their neighborhood. And this is an area that's home to a very diverse population. And many people do not use the car to get to where they need to go. Um, and so we proposed a traffic playground with an objective to empower residents to safely navigate city streets in multimodal ways and introduce them to avenues for civic engagement to better advocate for safety in their areas. Uh, we partnered with a local church and other organizations that serve the community. The church let us use their parking lot to develop the temporary traffic playground. As you can see in the pictures, we use tape, uh, chalk, and signage to create a streetscape. Uh, we partnered with Bike Houston, another local uh, advocacy organization, which provided um, safety lessons for the children and the adults who attended. And we also partnered with Free Wheels Houston, who provided bicycles and helmets that the children could use um, at the event. And as I mentioned, this was also a great civic engagement um, opportunity. We invited stakeholders and the district city council member to attend. The council member came and um, it was a great opportunity for the attendees to speak directly with him to let him know what their concerns are um, and to learn what he could do uh, to help improve safety, uh, particularly around schools. And for us, it was a great way to, um, you know, deepen some of the relationships that we started building in the community to get to know more people, to truly understand what the community values and what they would like to see improved. Um, and this was Link Houston's first event. Um, it wasn't very expensive um, to you know, purchase the materials. It was quite labor intensive uh, because we were a very small team um, at the time. And so, you know, um, coordinating and organizing the event and you know actually putting the tape and the and and, and the chalk on um on the parking lot developing all of that was uh very labor intensive and you know we didn't really know <laughs> what kind of turnout to expect uh because this was our first event uh but a lot of people came um and as i mentioned it was a great opportunity for us to deepen some of the relationships that we started building in that community um and really get to know what the community wants in terms of safety uh, for people who walk, roll, and bike, uh, particularly when it comes to children. Um, and so um, I will leave it at that, and I'm happy to uh, take any questions or hear any comments uh, from the other attendees. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ines. So this is just, um, you know, an example of what, you know, all of this education encouragement um, 
and engagement programming can look like in action. Um, you know, and I think that traffic playground, um, you know, either temporary or pop up projects um, are a great way to, you know, get people excited and invested in, um, you know, in safe walking and rolling. Um, they're kind of something a little, you know, like different and, and new and flashy and exciting. Um, and, you know, and again, really connects to everything we've been talking about with, uh, you know, getting that community community buy in and really um, setting the groundwork for you know, like rolling out your full program. Um, and I'm also going to now pass it over to Amar, who's from Harris County Precinct 1, to talk about um, an exciting traffic playground project that is in the works. So I'm going to go ahead and have him come off mute and share, uh, let's see, Harris County's website. Hopefully you all can see this. And Amar, whenever you are ready, the floor is yours. Can I share my screen? Sure. Uh, Hold on, let me stop sharing mine. Okay, and you should be able to share yours. Uh, can you see it? Uh, uh, I think so yes. I'm not able to see. Nope, oh. we're, we're good, I can see it. Okay, so um, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, today. Um, again, my name is Amar Mohete. Uh, I'm the Director of Planning and Infrastructure for Harris County Precinct 1 and my role within the organization, Office of Commissioner Rodney Ellis, and my role within the organization is to build safe infrastructure, uh, safe multimodal infrastructure for people of all ages and abilities. Um, I work with um, my counterpart within Precinct One, who is Fernando Martinez, he's the director of bicycle programs. So he brings in the programming component of, uh, of uh, safe, uh, safe bicycling within Precinct One. Um, again, I, as I mentioned, I work for Commissioner. Uh, I work uh, for the Office of Commissioner Rodney Ellis. He's a strong proponent of safe safety and access to healthy, active transportation. Um, so, a few years ago, uh, the commissioner challenged both Fernando and me to develop a bicycle playground uh, within Precinct One. And I just want to share with people who don't know what Precinct One is: is a map of Precinct One. And uh, as you can see, the dark boundary is the current uh, limit uh, of Precinct 1. Uh, and uh, the orange on the map is city of Houston. And you can see all the other cities that uh, we touch. So Precinct 1 goes all the way from uh, FM 1960 on the north side to Clear Creek on the south side. Um, and you can see Houston, downtown Houston in the middle. Uh, our goal is to improve, uh, uh, at least uh, related to transportation, it's about improving uh, healthy active transportation, improving safety, and it, it addressing it in an equitable manner within Precinct 1. Uh, so as the commissioner challenged us with uh, identifying an opportunity for bicycle playground a couple of years ago, and uh, we were trying to identify where we could do this, and we have a number of parks within, uh, within our Precinct one that we manage, but uh, our goal was to bring it uh, closer to where people live, uh, rather than bringing people, uh, bringing the playground to the people where people live, rather than building a playground where people would have to drive to to get to the playground. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about what a bicycle playground, bicycle education playground is. Uh, it is a place for people and kids to learn how to ride a bike or practice safe, uh, practice uh, bicycle uh, biking skills in a safe educational environment. The goal is to expand safe bicycling, especially in underserved communities by uh, providing opportunities, uh, by promoting safe biking, active transportation, safe routes to school programs, um, bike etiquettes on trails and other educational opportunities. Uh, the playground will be open to the public during uh, to the general public and also for schools and organizations that would use to that would like to program activities there. Um, a Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Club Scouts could come there and earn their safety badge at the at the bicycle playground. So we identified, uh, as you can see, uh, pre, uh, we identified uh, uh, Finnegan Park as a location in Fifth Ward. So Fifth, uh, Finnegan Park is just east of uh, downtown and it's uh, south of I-10. Uh, it's very centrally located. It is an underserved area. Uh, there are a number of schools, uh, uh, 
Natley Q Henderson Elementary School, Wheatley High School, McReynolds uh, Middle School, and Pew Elementary School. There are those are the just the schools immediately adjacent to the park on the south side of I10. There are four park, uh, four schools uh, on the north side also of I10. There, uh, however, they, the challenge is to cross I10 at that location. Uh, and at Finnegan Park, we also the precinct one also has programming, um, and uh, we run youth edu youth education town program at the park. So uh, precinct one maintains the uh, precinct one maintains the uh, park and has a long term agreement with the city of Houston to maintain that park. It's the city of Houston park that is maintained by the precinct. So we felt that that would be a great opportunity for bringing that uh, bringing bringing a playground within the community. Uh, for the residents. Um, Precinct One also has, I'm going to show an image of the playground. It's just a concept in development. It takes time to, so the goal, uh, the goal here was, can we repurpose, um, this is, so these discussions are happening post Harvey. And so the goal was, how do we repurpose uh, underused parking lot and uh, existing infrastructure to bring amenities for the community? So. We identified a portion of the playground uh, uh, parking lot that was not being used as much, and this is just a preliminary concept that was uh, developed to uh, to 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 develop this uh, to develop this uh, to develop the area. And so, uh, I just wanted to share something uh, so that people understand what kind of activities and how 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 others could repurpose. This is not the only uh, underused parking lot uh, in in Houston where. Uh, such activities could be um, could could be brought closer to closer to communities where people live. Um, so uh, I also wanted to share a little bit about uh, our programming side of what uh, Fernando does. Uh, you can find more information on uh, uh, www.hcp1.net/ride1bikeprogram. And so uh, as a part of the programming, we are evaluating and designing programs to uh, see the value of uh, to see how how we can adapt to the needs of the community. Uh, we provide bike safety education following the Bike Texas statewide safety curriculum, Safe Cyclists, or League of American Bicyclists training resources. We have certified league cycling instructor and certified pro race mechanic that uh, that provide knowledge to the program and uh, knowledge to the program and will help teach uh, constituents about. Um, uh, safety and also bike mechanics. Uh, we are also looking at developing new playground, uh, new programs around the bicycle education playground, and uh, and the, and the goal is to basically have a positive impact for uh, bikes uh, for kids who want to ride their bikes to school. So I think so it's tying into the safe routes to school program. Um, that that uh, that is a high level overview. Uh, we, as I said, this is still a preliminary concept. Uh, we would be uh, coordinating the design and uh, and improvements, and hopefully, my hope is to bring it uh, bring it uh, to the to the community by summer of 2022. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I'm going to pass it on back to you. Thanks, Samar. That was really helpful. Um, and again, again, I think that having this you know, like local context and seeing what's really happening um, on the ground in Houston and, and in Harris County can really show people you know, like the possibilities for um, what, what things can look like as you're building out your Safe Routes to School um, school program. So things like, you know, like the traffic playground projects um, are, are a big part of that. And you know, I just wanted to you know, end by kind of showing what, um, what a traffic playground project can, um, can, in, can turn into as it relates to safe routes to school and Vision Zero. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. Um, and so, you know, as I mentioned, um, you know, here in DC, um, our Safe Routes to School program and Vision Zero program are linked, and um, some of our Vision Zero funding has gone towards funding Safe Routes to School. So um, it's two or three years ago now, um, uh, our Department of Transportation, uh, DDOT, here in DC, um, funded the design and installation of two permanent traffic gardens or traffic playgrounds um, 
in, at two local elementary schools. Um, and this was actually linked to um, our, our city Safe Routes to School program. So again, combining Vision Zero and Safe Routes to School and um, you know, like the city really investing, um, you know, in, in the design and, and installation of these, of these traffic gardens. Um, this is actually a part of a larger um, bike education program initiative that we have here in DC. So all of our second grade students in public school um, participate in a bike education course the PE teachers teach. And so um, students at these two schools are now, are now able to learn how to ride bikes on their um, traffic gardens. So this is what a um, traffic garden looks like. Um, so for those of you who this is a new concept for you, um, you know, they're, they're really cool. Um, both you know, learning and educational spaces. Um, I partnered with a woman named Fanula Quinn, who has a, a um, business called Discover Traffic Garden. She's like a traffic garden expert. Um, she's based out of Northern Virginia. Um, I had gonna have Natasha put her email in the chat box or link in the chat box to her website. Um, she is a wonderful, great, wealth of knowledge about everything traffic garden related. Um, she designed the two um, gardens that we have here in DC. And so, um, you know, we work together on a few different um, community engagement uh, events around the traffic garden projects here. So we had students participate in a design charrette. So they, you know, helped us decide what the traffic garden will look like. We had Vision Zero education events. We branded as uh, Vision Zero Heroes. That was our, our, our tagline and way to pull people in. Um, and so we talked to kids about, you know, road safety, bike safety, what a traffic garden is, how you can use it to learn how to ride a bike. Um, and we did those at both of the elementary schools. Again, Vision Zero Heroes was our, our main tagline. Everybody loves a superhero, so we figured we can bring that in. Um, and it works well with Vision Zero. So it was all, uh, all connected. So there's our Vision Zero Hero, um, Vision Zero Hero things. Um, as a part of our Vision Zero, Vision Zero Hero traffic garden events, we had kids you know, participate in games and make reflective little superhero armbands. Um, and again, all of this was done through Vision Zero uh, funding that was, gone to, that was going to support Safe Routes to School. Um, as a part of that project, um, we also designed a, um, a bike, bike education curriculum for pre-K students. Um, and so as a part of that, we worked with parents to put together all of the curriculum materials for a little felt board project that kind of demonstrated how to ride a bike safely using little felt characters. So, um, you know, we got a group of parents and families together to come and work on that project with us, um, you know, helping us scale the materials together. And those are passed along to our pre-K teachers um, who can then implement this bike education curriculum in their classroom. Um, you know, in the culminating event, we had a large ribbon cutting once once the traffic playgrounds were, you know, were installed. Um, we had the school superintendent come out, the director of DDOT came out, elected officials came out and just went and celebrated, um, you know, what, what this looks like and celebrated all of the success. So we had kids who were out who were, you know, riding their bike, a lot of local press came. So again, thinking about ways to build the profile of Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero, it really felt like, you know, like this joint effort, like we were celebrating both Safe Routes to school um, and Vision Zero um, in, you know, like within the same event. And here are some of the students who are enjoying their new, uh, their new play space. So these are, um, I think, local preschool students um, and, you know, a lot of their, uh, the school staff members, parents, families, community members. And, um, you know, these two traffic playgrounds are located, um, you know, right, right on the, right on the school campus. So on the school, on the school blacktop. Um, and again, it's linked to you know, our, our Safe Routes to School programming. So as we're doing all of this, we're talking with families about crossing the street safely, uh, making sure that there's adequate lighting, asking people what they need to bike around their community. Um, you know, what infrastructure project programs do, do they need? Do you need sidewalks? Do we need better lighting? Do we need to you know, you know, fix curbs um, to make sure people can actually access these, you know, access these spaces. Um, so again, as you think about you know, like developing your programs um, and your bike and your traffic playgrounds in Houston, um, you know, again, this is an example of what something can look like when you really have that integration with Vision Zero, um, you know, and and plan thoughtfully and put in um, you know, put in some of that that funding and those and those investments. And it seems like you are already off to a really um, a really wonderful start with that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and see if there are any questions or comments in the chat. Um, there are a lot of good comments about different 
programs and organizations to connect with and, and reach out to. So please keep an eye on the chat as well. Um, and I'll make sure to send out um, all of this in our follow-up email, email too. Um, you know, and lastly, if there's other educational programming that's happening in Houston around safe routes to school or traffic safety or things you would like to see more of, feel free to add that in the chat too. You know, so if you want to see more traffic playgrounds or uh, or bike rodeos or um, or you know other walking and riding activities that families can do around safe routes to school or Vision Zero, um, please add that to the chat as well. We'd love to hear some of your some of your ideas. Um, so any questions? Any questions here? Um, and just one last point before we wrap up for today. So just like some other programming questions to keep in mind as you're thinking about building out your safe routes to school um, initiative in Houston, just thinking about, you know, who your target audience is. Um, I think that both in our, Amar and Ines mentioned, you know, like different communities who um, you, might, you, you might want to prioritize, um, low-income communities, communities of color, uh, underrepresented communities. Think about is your program culturally relevant to your audience? Um, thinking about race, ethnicity, gender, disability, age, LGBTQ+, um, you know, who's left out of the decision making process, what are barriers to participating in safe routes to school programming, how can you eliminate those barriers, and we're also thinking about what success looks like. So at the end of the day, once your program is up and running, um, what will what will success look like to you, will it be having 10 traffic playgrounds and different areas, uh, different different schools in, in the Houston area? Uh, will it be just, you know, seeing more kids walking and rolling? Will it be um, you know, having more sidewalks for people to, you know, like walk and roll on? Um, so that's another really important part of this too. Um, and we'll probably touch a bit more on all of these things um, in, in future webinars. So just something else to keep in mind um, as you're thinking about developing developing your program. Um, and I'm going to uh, check the chat box. Somebody had a question about the typical top cost or level of effort needing for these gardens, both to pilot and full implementation level. Um, Amari and Ace, I don't know if you um, have information about the cost or projected costs of your project. Um, I don't have the exact cost for ours in DC off the top of my head, but I can get it and send it to you um, if that's something that you're that you're interested in. Um, and and Sir Mar, if either of you want to come yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, so we know. have some planning level costs at this mm -hmm. point, but uh, we, we we would have to do a, a we'll have to do a little bit more uh, because we have to relocate uh, ADA parking, mm -hmm. relocate the dumpster and some of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just the pavement marking cost uh, and and but we would you know part of it is also making you want the playground a safe place for people to feel so making sure that the barrier because it's part of it is a parking lot so we want to make sure that the parking lot is physically separated from where the uh, the playground is separated from the parking lot so as we make these improvements uh, our, my hope is uh, that our project would be implemented uh, under under 100,000 uh, mm -hmm. so uh, because we want to make sure that it's an investment where the community feels welcome. So you want to think about benches, you want to think about more, like we were looking at trail connection and uh, uh, so that it, it makes it easier for people because part of it's like Houston has a lot of trails. Uh, and so we want to educate what are the trail etiquettes as people go ride, ride their bikes on the, uh, ride their bikes on the trail. And so there's a lot of education opportunities that you have. Uh, also, you want it to make be a welcoming place. So, uh, with uh, with those kinds of things in the, under consideration, the, uh, our budget was a little bit higher because it's not just a pavement marking kind of a budget. Yeah, yeah, I think that there can really be a range. Like I know that here at the ones in DC, um, you know, like even just like the the um, condition of the blacktop where we actually did the you know like the traffic garden you know, like markings, um, like made a big difference in you know our costs. Thinking about you know like the contractors we had to use and the paint that we had to get. So I can um, do a little bit of digging into what we've worked on um, and maybe some other communities what they've worked on, and then you know, like put together um, just you know some information for you all as you're you know thinking about. Um, you know how to pilot or do full you know implementation programs um in in houston so that was a really great great question um 
and I will get back to you with more information as soon as I have it. Um, any other last questions, comments, ideas before we close out for, uh, for today? And again, we'll be sending out um, all of the slides and um, a recording of this webinar afterwards. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and lastly, like I mentioned, we have our full report about Safe Routes to School and Vision Zero. Please feel free to take a look at that. And um, you all can always uh, reach out to me. Um, here's my email information, our organization's website. And also if you have an idea for an upcoming Safe Routes to School webinar, we're gonna continue these in 2022. So keep an eye out for those details. But if there's something that you wanna discuss more, if you wanna present something, if you wanna talk through something, um, please feel free to email me or share an idea in the chat. We'd love to hear um, you know, what, what you all would like for us to um, be focusing on in these upcoming sessions. Um, and again, I will send out everything uh, following this webinar. We also have um, a survey that we would love for you to complete, and I'll ask for Natasha to drop, drop the survey link in the chat as well. Um, it'll only take a few minutes um, just so we can make sure that we're continuing to provide um, the information that you all want and need. So please take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Um, and if there are no other questions, we'll wrap up for today. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, thank you to um, Amar and Ines for providing that local perspective. Um, I think there's so many cool and exciting things that are happening in the Houston area. So I really appreciate learning about what you all are working on. And I look forward to um, continuing learning more as we you know, move this webinar series um, along. So thank you all so much. Um, like I mentioned, keep an eye out for an email from me. And we will see you all um, hopefully on our next webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank Thanks. you, Corey. Thank you, everyone.